Good morning, everyone. I've, I'm very impressed by the number of people that uh, wake up uh, so early. Um, on behalf of uh, the speakers of this symposium and the Biogaia company, welcome everyone to this uh, um, symposium. What I call the uh, early probiotic symposium because it's so early today. Uh, Probiotics still um, reaches a lot of people and apparently interests a huge number of people, although it's not really a new concept. The Russian uh, Mechnikov got the Nobel Prize for the idea of using bacteria in the treatment already 100 years ago. And uh, it's only if you look at the right part of that slide, the recently the booming of the number of publications and the uh, growing interest on, uh, in, in this field um, that is happening. Bacteria are not different from movies. You have the good bacteria, the bad bacteria, and the ugly bacteria. And what we need to try is to understand how to make the separation and use the good one to suppress the bad and the ugly. And pediatricians are, of course, very interested in this area because at birth it's the only moment when the gastrointestinal tract is sterile. And so manipulation at birth of the right gastrointestinal flora for later um, um, development is an area which is very interesting uh, because it's clear now more and more, you will hear a lot of that about that this morning, that that flora is related to disease. We know also that the intestinal flora system is very complex with more than 1,000 species present for us in our adult gastrointestinal tract, or we all have more than one kilogram of bacteria or 10 to 100 times more bacteria in our gastrointestinal tract than we have own human cells. So our only function being a human is to be a vehicle for helping the bacteria to survive. That diet plays an important role in the development of um, diseases or what is happening worldwide is illustrated if you put these two um, totally independent informations together. But Western diets contain drastically decreased amounts of lactobacilli. That comes clear from uh, the first study, which lactobacillus plantarum is only present in 25% of the population in North America while it's present in 100% of the population of Africa and Asia. And if you now analyze the activity of that same lactobacillus prontarum, it uh, has in vitro and in vivo activity against salmonella, um, and so it illustrates how a healthy gastrointestinal flora may or may not help you to protect for diseases, but this is just one example. What is also very important is that we keep that balance in our gastrointestinal tract between harmful pathogens of possible bacteria and the health-promoting functions. And from the health-promoting functions, it's especially the bifido and lactobacilli, um, which are uh, well known, and this morning we'll focus on the ethics of the lactobacilli. The role of the um, gastrointestinal flora on the development of our immune system is uh, often neglected while in fact the gastrointestinal tract is probably the most important immune organ we have since 25 to 40 percent of the gut is lymphoid tissue and up to 70 percent of all the immune cells are located in the intestine. And we know that dietary components and digestion of products that we need food but that we also need microorganisms in that, in that gut for the development of the uh, gut-associated lymphoid tissue. So why do we need that optimal um, mucosal immune system? Well, it's to eliminate invading pathogens, the development of memory response to antigens as it cures with uh, infections and vaccinations, and the discrimination between self and foreign antigens, and that's the whole discussion about development of the tolerance and uh, immunity and allergy. So the gut microbiota helps to support the gut barrier function by increasing mucin production, by decreasing their permeability, 
by stimulating IgA activity and uh, keeping the T helper um, cells into balance, and you will hear also more about that. Just would like to end this introduction by very new data that will be published uh, very soon and that will not be discussed by one of the three speakers. It's an uh, open trial, but in a huge number of uh, preterm babies, uh, 250, as you can see, all outborn, stable oral feeding, and you have three groups of each time 83 babies, one receiving placebo, one receiving lactobacillus rhamnosus, and one the lactobacillus reutery, which is discussed this morning. Data on C-section and anti-acid use medication and other things um, are quite similar between uh, those three groups. But if you look at the outcome, then the number of infants with gastrointestinal symptoms is 3 on 83 in the lactobacillus reutery group, 29 on 83 in the lactobacillus rhamnosus group, and 36 on 83 in the control group. And I don't think you need a lot of statistics to show that 3 is indeed much lower than 29 or 36. And so the number, and as illustrated in all the um, other uh, parameters also, so the number of infants with hydrolyzed milks, the day of parenteral nutrition, 7 against 13 against 13, days needed to achieve the energy, complete full feeding, it's reduced by 50%. Number of infants with bacterial infections is 0, 1, 5. Um, number of infants with mycotic infections, it's uh, our days of hospitalization, 18, 27, 31. So it's very obviously that adding lactobacillus reutery in this study to preterm infants improves uh, in all aspects the outcome of these preterm infants and that they, uh, their general development is much improved. <clears throat>